I think he's gone. Listen to those poor little birdies. I suppose they miss poor Mr. Paulson. I'll lay them in his room. Well, let's see about this letter now. Dear Walter, I hope you don't mind my turning to you for advice, but I really don't know what to do. It's been three days since my boarder, Mr. Paulson, passed away, and I still haven't told the police what the man said to me. I just can't bring myself to get mixed up in anything like this. Dear, what's the use of writing, Walter? You'll probably think I've dreamed it all up. No, I'll just forget it. Only how do you forget such a thing? Those names, I keep hearing them. Richardson, Lindell. Lindell is innocent. Oh, dear God, what if it's all true? If Mr. Paulson actually murdered this Richardson and Lindell is innocent, only... Well, who are they? I wonder if a telephone book... Well, well why not? Let's see. Richardson, Richard... Oh, I see. H-A-R. Yeah, yes, here it is. Oh, Lord, there's dozens of them. Well, I'll try Lindell. That wouldn't be as common, I don't suppose. Yes, yes, here it is. There's only about half a dozen. Then D-L-D-E-L-L. Oh, Oh, my heavens, Lindell and Richardson. Both names together, Lindell and Richardson Investments. Nine Concourse, 4153132. I wonder if... Well, maybe... Maybe it's the only way to be sure. speak to. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Hello. This is Mr. Chilton. May I be of service? Well, maybe you can. I, I want to know about your Mr. Richardson, uh, about when he died. I think I did business with him once uh, a long time ago. Well, it's ten years, madam, just about. But uh, if you're interested in investment advice... Well, I'll think about it. Thank you very much. Ten years. Well, it could be a coincidence. I guess it all depends on how he died. Well, Mrs. Canby, please come in. Have a seat. Thank you. Well, now, how can we be of help to you? Well, I didn't come here to get help, Mr. Shelton. I came to help you, as a matter of fact. Or, rather, somebody you know. Who would that be? Uh, Mr. John Lindell, the man who was supposed to have murdered Mr. Richardson. I'm afraid I'm not following you. Well, it took me all week to find out what happened to those two men, and finally I found the story in the old newspaper room down at the library about Mr. Lindell being indicted for killing his partner. But I'm, I'm sure you know the whole story a lot better than I do. Well, of course I know the story, but <laughs> that was quite a long time ago, Mrs. Canby. Ten years. Doesn't seem so long when you're my age. Anyway, the point is that I can help your Mr. Lindell, only I can't do it alone. Did you know John Lindell? No, no, I didn't. Nor Mr. Richardson, for that matter. The man I knew was named Paulson. Who? I rented a room to Mr. Paulson, and he died about eight days ago of pneumonia. I was there when it happened. Well, that's unfortunate, but... Uh... Before he died, Mr. Paulson told me something about Mr. Richardson's murder. He said Mr. Lindell hadn't been responsible, that he, Mr. Paulson, had committed it for money. Oh, Mrs. Canby, listen to me. It was this man Lindell that bothered him. The fact that he was in prison for something he didn't do. I thought I should tell you this, Mr. Chelton, because you knew both of these gentlemen. It said so in the newspaper. 
Mrs. Canby, my my dear woman. What? I don't know what silly story you heard, but it's completely wrong. There wasn't any question about what happened. This boarder of yours, whatever his name is, merely had an obsession. Well, just the same, I thought you could follow through on this business. Yeah. Tell the police. Because if it is true, Mr. Lindell should be freed. On evidence like that? Well, I don't know anything about evidence. I'm just telling you what I heard. Well, never mind. I suppose I should have told the police myself. Wait, wait, Mrs. Canby. Uh, let me put your mind at rest. John Lindell is no longer in prison. He isn't? He's dead, Mrs. Canby. He's been dead yes. for the last three years. Oh. He wasn't a young man when all this happened, when he accused his partner, Fred Richardson, of defrauding him and shot him dead. He died? In prison? Even if all you say is true, that this man was Richardson's murderer, you can't help John Lindell any longer. He's beyond that. But his name, don't you want to clear his name? Have you any proof? Any living witness? Just myself. But you'd be willing to involve yourself? Start a whole new investigation? Open up the whole dreadful mess again? Mrs. Canby, do you know that John Lindell had a daughter? No. But wouldn't that be all the more reason to do something? His daughter's married, living in Minneapolis, a husband and three children. People have forgotten about her father by now. Would you want that poor woman to see his name dragged through the newspapers a second time? But if her father was innocent... Forget it, Mrs. Canby. That's my advice to you. The old wound is healed. Don't reopen it. Oh, well, it troubles me so... I haven't thought of anything else since it happened. Perhaps if I saw a, a minister, if I had some advice from a man of God, maybe... Mrs. Canby, now you've said something. Now you've shown me the way. That's where our answer lies, dear woman, in prayer. Mm -hmm. In the forgiveness of our dear Lord. Will you pray with me, Miss Canby? Pray? Here? Why not? God is everywhere. Please. Join me. Dear Lord, tell us what to do. Give us your divine guidance. Show us the path to righteousness. Mr. Stelton, I... Help us, O oh Lord. Help us to understand. Teach us to forgive the sins of others and to forget them. To forget. I feel much better now, Mrs. Canby. Do you? Well, I'm... Not sure. Let us turn this matter over to God, Miss Canby. Not to the police, but to the Lord. It's in his hands now. Don't you agree? Well, in a way, that's true. Since they're dead now. All of them. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Canby? Yes? My name's Stuart Winfield, Mrs. Canby. Mm -hmm. I understand you have a room for rent? Yes, 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 I do. Well, I'm new in town. I just arrived from Philadelphia. I've been staying at a hotel, but I'd like something homier. Well, the room I have is $35 a week. I can't offer you any meals, but you can use the kitchen all you want. Well, that sounds good to me. Would, uh, would you like to see the room? Yes, ma'am, I sure would. Well, uh, come on in, then. Thank you. By the way, how did you know I had a room for rent? Hmm? I was going to place an ad this weekend. Oh, I, uh, I, I guess someone at the hotel mentioned it. I, I forget just who. Say, this is a real fine old house, Mrs. Candy. Mm -hmm. I can see that I'm going to like this place. Just fine. <laughs> And so, Mrs. Canby has a new boarder. He's a very personable young man, with a great deal more charm than old Mr. Paulson had. Perhaps in a little while, Mrs. Canby will be able to forget her former boarder and the shocking confession he made on his deathbed. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. And now another tale of the ball and chain. Act Kellogg's Special K. 
Hey, presents Frida. Overweight on an Overnight Train. Is the seat taken? Please, sit down. Hey. You have exceptional legs. <laughs> uh, but why is one of them attached to a ball and chain? This ball and chain? It's a symbol. Funny, I would have sworn it was a ball and chain. I mean symbolic. Because carrying around a few extra pounds can be just like lugging around this ball and chain. I see. May I suggest something? Uh -huh. Try a bowl of Special K skim milk, orange juice, and coffee. It's the Special K breakfast. Will it make me lose weight? No. Oh. You must also exercise and eat smart at every meal. I see. Do you know the Special K breakfast is less than 240 calories, 99% fat-free, and delicious? No, but if you hum a few bars... And that's another tale of the ball and chain. Your happy ending could begin with the Kellogg's Special K breakfast. That's Kellogg's Special K. Good night. Take the time to listen. listen. Take the time to care. If I know you understand me, then my mind is yours to share. Listen with your heart. Listen, listen with your mind. When you How do you do, sir? My grandmother just died. I'm so happy for you. Meet Mrs. McNulty. How do you do? Hey, did you know you have spinach on your teeth? Oh, that's wonderful. This is Mr. Jackson. Nice to meet you. I have bubonic plague. Oh, yes, Mr. Plague. Meet Miss. Reception lines aren't the only places people don't listen. When you Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. Stu Winfield took no time at all to make himself at home in Ada Canby's big old house. He loved everything about his room. The fine old four-poster bed the crazy quilt that Ada herself had sewn up 40 years ago, the lace curtains on the window. He even loved Mr. Paulson's blue parakeets. But what he really seemed to like best was Mrs. Canby herself. Just take me two minutes to get these clean sheets on the bed, Mr. Here, Mr. let me give you a hand. No, 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 I can manage. I've been making this bed for almost 50 years. 50? You've lived in this house that long? Moved in here when I got married back in 1919. My husband David bought it for us. Our only son, Ralph, was born in it. And you've lost them both? Yes, they're both dead, but I haven't lost them. Oh, yes, yes, I understand, Mrs. Canby. I guess I feel that way about my mom. Your mother's dead? Yes, she died when I was two. Well, listen, Mr. Winfield, are you sure you want these birds in your room? Hmm? I could take them to the parlor if you want. No, no, I think they're great. I, I think everything's great about this house. Yeah, but there is something you can do for me. What's that? Would you mind not calling me Mr. Winfield? Oh? Uh, that's what they call my father. My name's Stuart. Well, well, all right, Stuart. <laughs> Dear Walter, I think it's about time I told you that I have a boarder in my house. Mr. Winfield is the nicest young man you could want to meet. He's a great deal friendlier than my first gentleman, Mr. Paulson, and he seems to like nothing better than to sit around evenings and talk. We talk about his home and his parents and his plans for the future. I think the poor boy misses his home and family, and I'm sort of a substitute for all that. Mm. You know, it isn't really fair, Mrs. Canby. You said I had kitchen privileges, but that doesn't mean you have to cook for me. Well, it's a pleasure, Stuart. I haven't had anyone to cook for in years. You're kidding. You mean to say you cook this good without practice? Oh, you're just being nice. I'm sure that stew is just plain ordinary. It's terrific, no kidding. It, it tastes like, well, it... It tastes like home, if you know what I mean. Well, it depends on whose home you mean. <laughs> well, my mom cooks stews like this. That's what I meant. Your mom? Mm. Well, but 
She died when you were only two. Oh, well, I, I guess I, I didn't mean my mom exactly. I, I was thinking of my Aunt Martha. Uh, I mean, she's the one who sort of took over the cooking and stuff after my mother died. And my father's sister, you know? I see. Well, that was lucky that you had someone to take her place. Yeah, that's right. It's... Excuse me. My, Stuart, yeah. you're not coming down with anything, are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. 